Okay, yeah, most doors suck. It's a reality that you have to live with and something that you probably won't notice unless it's something that you're aware of, in which case you're going to be looking at it all the time. Uh, so this door, you know, it's got the plate on the front so that you can't get like a card in it or anything like that, like a traveler hook past here so you can get at this and open the door. Uh, the one problem is, um, because the door fitment, it's not as tight as you would hope it would be on the outside, there's actually a bit of a gap. So you get a piece of guitar string or piano wire, feed it through here, get it back here, and then pull real hard, you'll get the door open. So this talk is just kind of about, it's probably mostly going to be about keys, but it's just a few things about physical security I wanted to touch on real quick with a new format, mostly because I got a new mic I want to test out. So uh, this is the inside of that door, and on the inside you can't really tell anything's wrong. I should have got a picture of the outside where there's a pretty obvious gap of like five centimeters, something like that. So if the door was fitted correctly, there would be no need for the plate, and um, if the latch on the inside fit in correctly, you wouldn't have to worry about anything. It would be fine. Uh, and then glass doors are also really susceptible to attacks. So um, glass doors with thumb turns at the bottom, because it's fire code, you have to have a way to exit the building if you're on the inside, even if the door's locked. Uh, but a lot of like you know, like malls and restaurants, and like my restaurant I work at has these sliding glass doors with a big gap in the middle. There's nothing in the gap either. So you can get this little tool right here called thumb turn flipper, I guess. You just stick this through the door, get this onto the actual thumb turn part and then manipulate this and you can turn the actual lock from the outside of the door just by sliding it through there. I'm not really sure what the solution to that would be, just glass doors in general that slide like that are a terrible security option for anyone that needs to know that. I, I honestly think if that's something you need to know, you should know it, because if you own a business with these kind of security flaws, it might be a good idea to know it. That way you can fix them, get them resolved as soon as you can. Um, so, I'm sorry about how this was formatted. I didn't have a proper video of this. Um, this is just dorking systems. So, if you live in a community, uh, like a gated community or something like that, it's very likely if you have a keypad door, you have something called a dorking system. The dorking is just the brand that makes these doors. Uh, you could tell, I'll show you a picture of them later in the presentation, what they look like. They all look very similar. Uh, and the problem with these systems is that the key is available on Amazon, which means that anyone can buy them, including me. And you don't want people like me to have that kind of key. I, I, sh I don't belong in this neighborhood. There's no reason I should be able to get in here. So I was just at a neighborhood and I uh, opened it up and posted on Instagram, talked about it a little bit. Uh, but once you open the panel up, there's a little switch in there for uh, mailman. And you just hit that switch and the gate will open, no problem. Uh, there's also... Some gas pumps use the CH751 key, uh, mostly older pumps, which, you know, you don't want anyone messing with the gas pump, especially because the this key opens. Yeah, so uh, the CH751, most popular key in America, no one would expect you to be able to do that. It so works on uh, CH751 key is tank. really so common that it's likely that you probably have one already, but if you don't, they're really cheap on Amazon, and you can pick one up if you wanted to. I'm not saying go out and do things you shouldn't, it's a terrible idea, but you know, it's something that you should be mindful of. So this is the Door King panel right here, and it's, most of the time you can tell it's a Door King because of these three buttons, like from a far away, these three large buttons right here all on the line, that's a really good indication that this is Door King, uh, Door King manufactured it. So this keyway right here is gonna go to this key, uh, which is pretty expensive. It's like $20 on Amazon. But, you know, if it, it's nice to add to a pen testing key ring, and uh, it's definitely not something that every single person should have access to if they so wish it. But, like I said, definitely a security flaw if you don't want people in your neighborhood. I don't think anyone's going to go out and do this. There's no reason if you want to get into a gated community, just go over the fence or just, like, have someone open the gate. It's not hard to get into a gated community. They're not that secure. And then uh, Lanier is another real big company with these keypads, and most for the most part, their systems are also key to like. It's called the A126 Lanier key. Um, I've got one of these in my key ring just because it's fun to go around and mess with things that you shouldn't mess with. But um, if you want security, I wouldn't go with Door King Lanier just because all of their keys are key to like, and it's a great party trick if you're walking by a gated community with your friends. Just open up the door. 
Uh, and then this is the CH751 key. I'm sorry if that's kind of bright. Um, this is really like most cabinet keys you see. So if it's like a filing cabinet or a display case or something like that, it's going to use the CH751 key. I have seen these things absolutely everywhere and I have one on my key ring. And if I see a lock out in public, there's a good chance I'll try it just to see if I have the key for it because it's interesting. Um, the dishwasher at my job, it has a switched power input. So to turn the dishwasher on or off, you have to use a key. Um, so just to keep like people from not messing with it when they shouldn't be. Uh, but you know, it's a $3 key on Amazon if anyone wanted it. And there's other machinery as well that uses CHN51 key, which they really shouldn't because it's not a secure key. There is a very large um, trash compactor for cardboard boxes at my job. And the power switch is keyed so that, you know, kids won't play with it because it's out in public, you know, it's just behind the mall. Uh, but if someone bought this key, then they'd be able to turn on the trash compactor, which I'm not really sure what you do with it. Um, I think it's more like there is an active danger of little hands getting in the trash compactor or someone being in the trash compactor playing in it. Who knows? Kids are crazy. And it getting turned on. So, um... Definitely think that heavy machinery should not be using this kind of key, but it's interesting to see that they do. Uh, I think that's mostly just because it's so cheap and plentiful to get cores that fit this key. Um, other than that, that, that's my entire presentation. and I know it was done on Prezi, which is kind of cheesy, but I've never done this format before. So I wanted to try this out and just see how it went. Like my last video, these are all just, I'm trying new stuff out. Um, I, I will go over my key ring. I have a pen testing key ring that I carry with me every day. Uh, I think it'll be very interesting to go through that. But this is just a really basic, like, more me rambling than anything else, just about different security things. But uh, I think some people might find this interesting. Uh, so tell me if you did. And if you didn't, then don't tell me anything.